Hi everyone, this is Rudy. He is a lovely white stander poodle and he is seven years old. He's gonna have a haircut with me here today. I am going to do a pet lamb trim on him. So it's something that we would do day to day in the salon. Um, normally if I was doing a competition, I would hand scissor a lamb trim, but in a salon, that's not really ideal a lot of the time. So I'm gonna show you how to do a nice easy pet trim on him using clippers today. So today on Rudy, I'm going to use a peach comb attachment, which is an attachment four. I've just placed it over my 30 blade because I feel like this leaves a really nice finish on it. I am going to clip from the top line first. So from the base of his shoulders, I'm going to clip his top line, follow it around his body, and I will skim off of his legs. I'm going to leave a little bit of shape in his bum and in his chest, just so that I can scissor that in to give him a nice bit of angulation as well. So I tried the attachment four on Rudy today, but where he's just got some tangles, where he's got such a lot of coat, um, the attachment comb didn't quite go through. So I've actually just switched to a three and three quarters blade. So the length is fairly equivalent to the attachment four, but where it's a blade, it will just glide under the knots a bit easier. So I'm gonna clip on his top line, all around his body. I'm gonna leave a little bit of shape in his bum, leave him with a little bit of crest here, and then scissor his legs after. So when we're doing a poodle pet trim, we want to leave a little bit of crest here just so the head doesn't look stuck on. If you clip from the occiput back, it looks like you've just got the head stuck on and then this all short. So we leave a little bit here from the back of the ear to the point of the shoulder and then we scissor this in after. So when I'm clipping the body, you have to be really careful of blending in here just to leave this bit. And we also take the neck here nice and short to lengthen the neck to make them look nice and elegant and regal. So when we're clipping the body, you can actually use your clippers to help you with sculpting the leg. So when we blend down the leg, you'll see that I apply pressure and then at the point that I want to blend off the leg, I use my clippers without pushing pressure. So it doesn't take any of the coat that you need off, but it just really helps to sculpt the leg into the shape. And in a salon, that's a really good trick to use with your clippers, just to help you minimize the time that you have to spend on scissoring. So now I've clipped his flat work on a three blade. I've switched to my 10F, which I'm gonna do his hygiene area. So I'm gonna clip out his armpits, which he's, I'm only going to do because he's got some knots in there. Normally I wouldn't clip out the armpits, but that's a very sensitive area to brush. So I'm gonna use my 10 on his armpits, on his groin, at the base of his tail, and then I'm gonna to switch to my trimmers to do his face and his feet. So 
So when we clip the base of the tail, it's really important not to use a blade that's too short because you can irritate around their hygiene area. So I'm going to use a 10F and I'm just going to do the base of his tail. It's really important not to take too much off because you don't want to expose too much of the tail and have pom-pom on the end. Um, traditionally, they used to have their tails docked, so they did used to have the pom, whereas now it's a bit longer um, because we don't dock tails anymore. So it's really important to bear that in mind that we don't want to shave too much hair and create a pom um, because they don't have the dock tail anymore. So that's going to be quite impossible to do. Um, when you clip the tail, you're also aiming for a V at the top here so that when the dog has the tail up, the tail sits nicely into the bum and has a really good angulation. It accentu accentuates the angulation here. So I'm going to switch to my trimmers now. I've got the Wild Arcos here and I'm going to do his face and his poodle feet as well. When you're clipping poodle feet, you don't want to go above the top of the toe, so the first joint here. A lot of people clip really high up and then that gives them what I call chicken feet. So you need to make sure that you are clipping just to the first toe. Then we're going to do a trick with the trimmers where we actually pull down all the hair here and we're going to do his bracelets. So any hair that's overhanging where you've clipped the foot, we're going to use our shortest blade on here and just take off any excess hair. When you put the foot down, that then sets in your line so you can scissor that leg nice and easily. Another trick I'm going to show you is with the tail. So you pull down all of the hair and then when you get to the base of the tail, you make sure you can feel the end of the tail here and any excess hair, we're going to just take off with the shortest blade. Then when you put the tail up, this will set in your line and make it really easy to scissor the rest of the tail. So I'm on to scissoring now. I've clipped all of Rudy's body. You can see here I've left a little bit of hair just where the bum is. And this is just to add some angulation in. Sometimes when you shave it off, you, they just look a bit sloped down the back end. So it's really nice to leave some angulation so that when they put their tail up, they've got a nice point of bum here and then it goes really short in here. So you can see I've clipped the top here, the top line, and then I've just left this here, which I'm gonna scissor at an angle down here and then straight down the bum here. And that just really helps to sit the tail in when the tail's up, and that'll give you a really nice bum angulation. So I'm gonna use the Aureus and the Luminosa. As everyone knows, these are my favorite scissors in the world. Um, the Luminosa, I'm gonna use the straights here, the big eight inch curves, the small 5.5 curves, and then I'm gonna use these new curve chunkers, which I absolutely love. And these just help add a bit of texture to the coat. I am a straights kind of girl, so I love using my straight scissors, but these just help on really tricky areas that don't scissor very nicely.
So we're gonna move on to his back leg now. Um, this is a pet trim, so I've taken the bum nice and short here, and ideally we would like to go from the flank to the front of the toe. So this should be a slight bend here and not too straight, and this gives them a really nice shape of the leg. You also want to lift up the foot. So on a poodle, it should go short here, out here, and then back in. And that just gives you that be uh, beveled foot and a nice elegant finish to the leg. When you look from the side, you shouldn't be able to see too much hair overhanging. You don't want to have big flares on this style because it's not an Asian fusion style, we're doing a poodle style. So when you look from above, you don't want to see big legs from the side. So we're going to leave a little bit extra here to shorten the dog because the more hair you leave here and here, you're going to shorten them. And if you take this out already, you can see if I take that off, you can see how this space here is making him look so much longer. So by leaving this hair, you can shorten them up and give the illusion of a different shape of the dog. So we are going to move on to his front legs now. Um, the idea of the front legs is you want nice tubular shaped legs. You can see where you've done his bracelets already. This actually sets in your shape and your nice beveled foot here. Um, so that can be followed up to the top here. I've done some blending with my clippers to blend this in and then I'm going to hand scissor his leg. The, we don't want too much at the front and a bit more at the back, again, to shorten the dog. And when you look from the front, you should be able to see through their legs and not have too much hair overhanging the body. So you don't want to have a short body and then a big bouffant leg here. You want it to go completely parallel down the leg like this. So it looks like it's attached and not sticking out. <laughs> So we're on to the main part now, and that is the head. It's my favorite part to do. I absolutely love doing the head of a poodle. It's um, my favorite bit, I love it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna brush it all forward, and first of all, we're gonna do the visor. I like doing it step by step, so I block out my shape, and then I put a finish on it after. So we're gonna block out the shape by doing the visor, and then we're gonna set the lines in. So this line here, where you've clipped the face, should go from the corner of the eye to the corner of the ear, and the same on this side. Then when you get to the top knot, I brush it all over to one side, I set my scissors here, and I take off anything that's overhanging the ear. This helps give you that really nice shape on the top knot that comes out, round, and in again. And it just helps separate the ears from the top knot as well. 
I then do the same on the other side, so brush it all over, set my scissors on the ear, and then trim off anything overhanging. And then it's basically a game of match. So you match up all the shapes you've put in. So you match this to this and this to this. And that helps just trim the top off and fit, put a finish on it. With the crest here, where you've clipped, we're just scissoring into it and up into the head. And this, as I said before, this just helps because if we take off all of this, it looks like the head is just stuck on. So by adding the crest, it just adds a nice depth to the neck, but where it's short under here, that makes it look really long and elegant as well. So we're just gonna use our scissors to kind of come up here and into the top knot. On his ears, I'm just gonna take the ends off. He's got lovely, beautiful, long ears here. So I'm just gonna take any of the scraggly ends off and then that's his head. So we are all done with lovely Rudy here. He has been a superstar for me today. Um, I've used some amazing products on him. I've actually used some of this Matex just to help with some of the knots on his coat, which has really helped. There is a few patches that are a bit shorter where I've had to take them out, um, but that's quite common in pet grooming and it is what we'd see in the salon every day. So um, that's what we deal with as groomers. So he has been a superstar. I've used a 3F on his body, scissored his legs and scissored his head. And as you can see, he's a superstar. Good boy. <laughs>